This is the Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to the Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, March 28th show. I provide you news on everything regarding your money, fresh information on market trends and conditions in our local economy. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but you can always call into the show at one 855 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com with any questions or if you want me to connect you with any of the guests that I have in studio today. And in studio right now, I have Brad Van Vechten with Private Wealth Management Solutions, also Kelsey Blackham, Vice President of Duncan & Haley, and Glenn Price with Price and Ferrington Attorneys at Councils attorneys and counselors at law. Today is really going to be a panel discussion um, just talking about all of these three areas, financial planning, estate planning, and insurance, I think are key components to our wealth management team and people that we need. And and I thought it'd be fun to talk with the three of them together because they are a, a power partner group. They do business together, uh, take care of their clients all in this arena. So thanks you guys for uh, joining me in studio. Our pleasure. Yes, absolutely. Glenn. Thank you. And just a little bit about, uh, let's start out with Brad. Uh, Bradley is independent, fee-only, and certified financial planner. He's been helping individual families and small business owners identify and achieve their financial goals for 20 years. He works with you personally to understand your needs, map out cohesive strategies, and provide ongoing guidance to help you succeed as an investor. His professional credentials include certified financial planner, certified investment management anal- analyst, chartered life underwriter, and a chartered financial consultant. Brad is founder of Private Wealth Management. Management Solutions based in Bellevue, Washington, right down the street from my office, and State Registered Investment Advisor. Brad, thank you again for joining me. Happy to be here. Uh, background on Kelsey. Kelsey is the Vice President of Duncan and Haley LTD and is the lead advisor of their insurance division in Seattle. Kelsey was born in Port Angeles, Washington, and earned her bachelor's degree at University of Washington in business administration. Um, carries life health, disability, and long-term care insurance licenses and holds the certified long-term care designation. Thank you, Kelsey, also again for coming into studio. Yeah, thank you. And last in studio, but definitely not least, last and least, Glenn Price. Price and Farrington, PLLC attorneys and counselors at law, graduated from Harvard at the London School of Economics and Duke Law School, 39 years in legal practice. Named a super lawyer by Washington Law uh, Politics Magazine, named a top estate planning attorney in 2013 Seattle Magazine. Glenn has spoken throughout Washington in public and private estate planning events over the past 20 years. Works closely with other professional advisors and Serving clients, needs and estate, tax, retirement, asset protection, and family wealth planning. Glenn, thank you for joining me. Thank you. And I want to just go ahead and start out. I'm going to start out with um, we're uh, on the financial side, really talking about a uh, comprehensive financial plan. And Brad, I've had you in studio before, and I'm excited that you're able to come back and also introduce me to uh, to part of your um, uh, power partner team. Let's start out with what is a comprehensive financial plan or planning. Yeah, so that's uh, where you'd engage the services of a certified financial planner to uh, evaluate a specific part or or perhaps the entire picture of a person or family's current financial situation uh, with an eye toward what to do going forward to give you the best uh, chance of uh, achieving your goals. So that can include education or college planning, and not even college anymore. There's uh, some of these high schools are pricey. Um, retirement planning, uh, valuation of your cash flow to see if you can afford all these things, taxation strategies, uh, estate planning, uh, including wills and, and uh, powers of attorney, insurance coverages, mortgage strategies, that's where you come in, um, investment strategies, and then business continuation or ex- exit strategies if you happen to be a small business owner. Um, and what we do is we run that information, uh, informa- you know, ask you a, a number of questions, get a sense of... Uh, where you are, where you want to be, uh-huh. and run it through some software to see what things might look like 10, 20, or 30 years down the line, uh, given certain assumptions. You know, for instance, rates of return on real estate, uh-huh. um, your investments, uh, rates of inflation, things like that. 
Uh, and so then I would provide you with a, a cohesive strategy or a roadmap uh, that integrates all your goals. Um, and that's when I bring in specialists uh, such as Kelsey and Glenn. So let's go ahead and, and talk. Kelsey, I, you know, um, Brad just mentioned in bringing you in uh, your expertise. It's really putting together uh, the package that you need for your uh, insurance. That's life insurance, disability and long term insurance. Why is it important to have life insurance? There's a lot of reasons to have life insurance. Um, you know, kind of first and foremost is just looking at basic family protection. Um, that's a, a primary consideration for folks. Kind of the bottom line there is that if you have dependents that rely on you and your ongoing income and you don't have the savings otherwise to support that, if you were gone, then you are definitely a candidate for some life insurance. Um, other things that you might consider life insurance for would be things like funding a child's education, mm-hmm. um, or as Glenn might talk about, talking about your uh, state taxes and possible funding for that with life insurance typically held in trust. So lots of reason to consider life insurance, primarily family protection. So Kelsey, what about the coverage um, that you need? So, so how do you break, how do you decide on that? Yeah. So as far as determining an appropriate amount of coverage, I mean, this is really where you need a financial planner. There's so many factors that come into play in determining an appropriate amount of life insurance. Um, You'll want to take into consideration everything from your income level, what your annual spending rate is, Mm -hmm. um, other assets that you have, debts that you have, including your mortgage. um, And then, of course, whether or not your spouse contributes to the household income. So basically, your overall financial position is is really going to determine what's an appropriate amount of coverage and how it should be structured. So that's where you'll, a good financial planner can be really helpful. So Brad, let's go back to you then on financial planning because Kelsey kind of you know put it in, in your arena and this is really, the show's about your, your financial plan in all areas and mm-hmm. really partnering up and being able to, uh, we can only be an expert at one thing. My expert is doing mortgages and that's that's what I do, but there's a whole round of, of people that are, that are needed. So how do you are helping in the life insurance policy or the life insurance and in the financial plan and being able to help them plan for that? So we do an assessment of, uh, as Kelsey said, exactly what's needed. Uh-huh. Uh, um, and in the event that the principal breadwinner wasn't around, as an example, um, how would you pay off the mortgage? How would you pay college uh, uh, education costs and things like that? Uh-huh. And then you have to factor in how much life insurance you can afford and what's the best type of life insurance because there are a number of uh, types of insurance that Kelsey will go over with us uh, in a second. So. Um, that's where the cash flow analysis comes in as well. Okay. So you could have a need for a million dollars, but not be able to afford a million dollars. Sure. And that's, uh, you know, the give and take. So you're going to help them decide what they have, where they can strategize and place that money to, to maximize the opportunity and then let them know what they, what they have to work with and send them back to Kelsey. Correct. So Kelsey, let's talk a little bit, a little bit more about the coverage. What about coverage at work? Are, do they, do you need a supplement to that? If they already have coverage at work, what do you advise there? Yeah, so a lot of employers will provide some type of life insurance. It's usually pretty basic. It might Mm -hmm. be just only $10,000 to cover your final expenses, or it might be one or two times your income on average. Um, Either way, once you determine with your financial planner or your investment professional, you know, what the appropriate amount of insurance is, you can kind of back off what your employer provides and then usually have to supplement that with a private policy. It's actually pretty interesting comparison to run that voluntary coverage for life insurance, at least with your company, is pretty expensive. And so if you're in good health, going and buying that type of coverage on your own as an individual can actually be a lot more cost effective. So that's an exercise worth worth running. Exactly. Now, Glenn, let's go ahead and, and go down to you and, and talk about the state planning, because that's another really important piece. And I think that's actually a piece that people kind of put on their back burner for some reason. And I think it's because we're uh, we're getting it well, and actually sometimes even on the life insurance side of it. But um, what can you can you break down what uh, estate planning is, Glenn, for my listeners? Sure. The, the folks who come in to see me are attempting to control their assets while they're alive. They want to take care of themselves and their family if they become disabled or incapacitated. And during their lives and following their death, their goal is to leave what they have to who they want, the way they want, when they want, as privately as possible with the least possible cost fees and taxes. Mm -hmm. And that really is bottom line what estate planning in general is all about. And Glenn, when should they start the estate planning? I mean, when should they do this? Yesterday. I, that, <laughs> yeah. I knew the answer, but yeah. I just needed to you have know, you say that to my listeners. A procrastinator's work is never uh-huh. done. And yeah. find <laughs> procrastination truly is, is a big problem. You know, folks um, are misled into believing that estate planning is just about death and dying. Yeah. And therefore, it's about death planning. Well, that means that 20-year-olds aren't going to do estate planning because yes. they're not going to die. Yep. 30-year-olds are too busy, so they don't do it. Yep. 40-year-olds are in denial, so they don't get around to doing it because they're thinking of it as death planning. Uh-huh. We find that when folks hit 50, 
it takes them anywhere from about two weeks to 25 years to get around to doing their estate planning. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That is so that is such a scary thought. <laughs> and I, I, I know the answer to this, Glenn, but I, again, I want to I want from the expert to share with my listeners who needs estate planning. Really everyone, because uh, I, I, another myth, myth and misconception is that estate planning is just for the wealthy, just for the rich. Yes. Uh, because estate planning involves protecting yourself and your family during your life if you're out of commission, if you're laid up, if you're ill or injured, uh, it doesn't matter how old you are or what kind of wealth you have. It's the kind of planning that everyone needs to have in place on some level or other. Exactly. I, I so much agree. And then let's try, what about Brad financial planning on the financial side? Who needs financial planning? When should somebody pick up the phone and give you a call? So uh, if you're just starting out a family, as an example, I think it'd be a great time to, okay. to put some sort of a roadmap in place. Um, planning for uh, college education, mm -hmm. even retirement, things like that. So, you know, the answer is uh, the sooner the better you can put some sort of roadmap in place, um, you know, particularly if you're young and just starting a family. Now, that being said, uh, if you're 50 years old and thinking about uh, retirement, you want to get some sense of when that's going to be feasible, uh -huh. then do it then. You know, at least come in and, and have a retirement plan done to, uh, to give you some idea what things might look like um, and when you might be able to retire. Yeah. And I, I think every, you know, again, uh, the money hour is about all of our everything regarding financing. And I think it's the same anywhere. If you want to think about buying a home, you talk to a mortgage professional right away. And that's going to determine whether you can or cannot buy a home and being able to strategize. If you're not sure about financial planning, that means you need to pick up the phone and you need to talk about financial planning and get an idea of where you're at and strategize on whether it's a, um, a how your plan's going to move forward. Uh, Kelsey, I'd like to get back to a life insurance because there's a lot of there's a lot of different life insurance policies out there and how do you counsel and help your clients decide i mean you know what types are available right um again your financial plan will really drive what's appropriate for you but mm -hmm. in general there's two types of coverage uh, if you boil it down there's term insurance and there's permanent life insurance term, term insurance is generally coverage for just a stated period of time like 10 or 20 years and it works a lot like your home or auto coverage where if your house doesn't burn down, you don't get anything back. There's no investment component, no cash value. It's just straight pure insurance. Um, permanent insurance, on the other hand, is, is things like universal life or whole life. And those are generally lifetime type policies. They're usually guaranteed to pay out at some date, not just mm -hmm. if you die in the next 10 or 20 years. And a lot of them also carry a cash value or an investment component where you can access that cash value at a later date and it typically grows tax deferred over time. And that is a really key one in, in consulting and, and finding out that fits in your financial plan when talking with Brad, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, some, there's some really great, um, and I think any product out there, there is really great products for the right person. So it's just understanding what those products are and where they fit into your overall uh, plan. Absolutely. Yeah. So don't go away. Coming up next, I'm, I'm right here with the panel. It's going to be the entire show. And today's show is about your financial life, how important it is. What do you need to do? How do you prepare? And who do you need to talk with? Well, I've got them all in studio here. Brad Van Vechten with Private Wealth Management Solutions. Kelsey Blackham, Vice President of Duncan and Haley. Glenn Price with Price and Farrington, Attorneys and Counselors at Law, right here on 1150 AM KKNW after the short break. This is the Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Well, welcome back to The Many Are with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, March 28th show. It's a great time to talk about money, and that's why I'm here and the purpose of my show, how to make money save money and build a better quality of life for you and your family. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you're listening to a rebroadcast to talk to with myself or any of the guests that I have in the studio, you can call the show at one 855 411 Again, that's one 855 411 uh, Today's show or kind of a panel discussion, we're talking about your financial planning, your insurance planning, and your estate planning. Thanks, you guys, again. I've got Brad, Kelsey, and Glenn here. Thanks, you guys, for uh, sticking around for the entire show. Happy to. Thank you. So, Glenn, let's go ahead and start out the uh, beginning of this segment on the estate planning arena, talking about triggers or events that would trigger a reason why you want to start the estate planning or even, at, you know, to relook at the estate planning again, what are those life triggers that people need to be aware of? 
You know, the initial life trigger is when folks become of majority age, 18 years of age and older, they really want to put together some kind of estate planning. It might vary in its uh, complexity or mm -hmm. detail, but that's the starting point. Uh, as folks move through their lives, the kinds of things that can impact uh, their estate planning and cause them to perhaps want to revisit decisions they made earlier are marriages, divorces, births, uh, a change in health, a dramatic change in wealth, upwards mm -hmm. or downwards. Uh, changes in the law, certainly, tax-wise and otherwise, can cause people to reevaluate. Changes in beneficiaries, needs, abilities, all kinds of factors. And if there is no changes, should they still be kind of looking at it on an annual basis, Glenn, or, or how do you counsel your, your uh, clients there? Well, you always want to be mindful of the planning you have in okay. place so that if some life event has occurred or your goals or circumstances have changed, you can go back and reevaluate that planning. And I'd like to ask all of you this, um, uh, starting out with uh, Brad in representing the financial um, planning arena. There's a lot of online resources. There's a lot of online tools, especially in dealing with numbers that you can use. What is the, what's the downfall and disadvantage if somebody thinks they can just kind of, you know, do this plan for their finances all on their own. Yeah, you're exactly right, by the way. I hadn't thought about that, that all three of our disciplines you yes. can pretty much get uh, very low cost online. So um, I can only tell you this. You're doing something online. You're not getting, uh, you're not speaking with somebody that's got 20 years of experience behind mm -hmm. them. Um, an online financial planning software doesn't know what questions to even ask, yes. you know, aside from, you know, the hard facts. And most importantly, uh, online software is not going to talk you in off the ledge in an event like 2008 yes. you know, or, or 2000. So I think uh, that's just scratching the surface in terms of what sort of value yep. finding a qualified um, qualified certified financial planner to work with is going to benefit you. Makes what makes total sense, Glenn. And, and for you, I mean, in the estate planning, there's all these online things that you can go in. And, and um, what would be your answer to that? Well, you can always build an airplane from a kit. But would you want to fly in it? Love it. The, the problem is off-the-shelf, cheap, boilerplate, fill-in-the-blank plans are inadequate. In the end, attorneys find that it provides more business and higher fees because f folks didn't plan proactively. So greater cost complications and confusion mm -hmm. down the road are going to result from uh, El Cheapo-type planning. And the last thing that you want to go, the well, last thing you want to do is is do El Cheapo when it comes to anything regarding your financings, because a small financial mistake can turn into a huge financial mistake, not only for you, but for your loved ones as well. Uh, Kelsey, I want to go ahead and switch back over to the insurance side and uh, talk a little bit about disability insurance. Do most pr providers or most employers provide disability insurance for their employees? Yeah, absolutely. For those who don't know, disability insurance is basically like paycheck insurance. If you're able, okay. ever able to not work due to an illness or injury, then that's really where disability insurance comes in and starts to replace a portion of your income. Um, a lot of employers do provide that coverage. Uh, at work, you'll find usually pretty limited benefits if there is a benefit, so worth okay. checking your benefits book. Um, a lot of benefits will provide about a 60% benefit, and that's usually income taxable to a lot of employees, and that's something oh, that wow. people don't realize. So kind of the age-old question there is, could you afford to live off of half your paycheck? Exactly. And if the answer is no, then you're probably not getting enough out of your group coverage. So then they would, they would need it. to have supplemental um, uh, coverage where you could assist and help out with that. That's right. The other thing to look at, too, is if you have any commissions or bonuses or other types of income like K-1 income, a lot of those forms of income aren't commonly covered under group yes. insurance policies. So worth looking at individual supplemental policies and just making sure that you're you're adequately covered. Makes total sense. And I know a lot of people it's in this arena, especially with disability, it's like, you know what, this is not going to happen to me. What are the odds that something's going to happen that I need disability insurance? And how would you answer that? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. There's a lot of different surveys out there. I think a, a good one that's pretty recent is from a 2010 Consumer Disability Awareness Survey that, that basically basically states about 30% of people today that are entering the workforce, so people in their 20s and 30s, okay. will experience a disability sometime prior to the time they're retired. Are so you serious? That is, a, that is all a huge percent. And it's interesting because wow. it's so much more likely than dying during your working years, <laughs> yeah. and yet more people will have life insurance than they do disability coverage. Oh, so it's really an under-addressed need. So if you, and I've got to ask this, I mean, if you've got somebody that comes in because of, uh, the financial, uh, the ability to be able to financially do everything can, can be challenging. So are you... 
Are you helping after they talk with Brad and get their financial plan together to make sure that they're maximizing their extra cash flow based on how they're investing their money? And then he sends them over to you to get dialed in on their on their insurance. Or is it more important to have a, a little bit of everything? And we're talking life insurance, disability, and long-term insurance. Have a little bit of everything to make sure that you're covered in all areas. Or is it better to focus on one? I mean, how do you strategize with that with someone that doesn't have the money to do everything. Right. Yeah, I think it becomes an order of priorities. At first, okay. you're going to look at what's the biggest need? What are the biggest risks to you and your financial plan succeeding over time? Sure. And if that is just an ultimate death situation, then of course, life insurance is going to be important. But for most people, the odds of disability, the odds of death are all present for everybody. So yeah. having a, an, at least a sufficient amount of coverage in each of those areas is important. Makes total sense. So on the disability, uh, when should a listener buy it is when they start their employment and do they ever get to cancel it? Right. Yeah. So <laughs> as a, for an everything? that's a great question. Yeah. So as a general rule, you know, you want to get disability insurance around the time you start your professional career. Okay. Um, these the premiums on disability insurance are based on the age at the time you buy it. So the younger you buy, the, the lower the premium in that you're locking in over your lifetime or during your working time. So the younger, the better. Uh, the other thing that's you know worth noting is that health insurance or your health status is actually a really big factor in determining what rate you pay. So okay. you kind of joke you're never getting younger or healthier than you are today, basically. Exactly. So that's worth noting. And of course, disabilities can occur at, at any age. It's not yes. something that you just think will happen in your 50s or 60s. You know, anybody can kind of get hit by the bus at any exactly. day. So. Exactly. So making sure that you have that coverage. coverage and it's not just coverage and protecting you, but it's protecting your spouse. It's protecting your children. And so it's really important when we talk about, about insurance. So, Brad, let's get back to the financial planning arena. And we already talked about the online stuff and really being able to kind of do stuff on your own, which is um, a really, really bad decision. You really need to have an expert and a local expert that you're building a long-term relationship. But let's also talk about that expert and who they're choosing. Why would it be important to work with an independent, certified financial planner, Brad? Uh, great question. Um, I, I think the preference should be because a, cert, a CFP is, gives you an unbiased advice. Okay? okay. So if you're dealing with a CFP for, in, for or a financial advisor, or they call themselves a financial planner, mm -hmm. um, and by the way, a lot of people are doing that these days that work for insurance companies, as an example, because uh, they're deliberately trying to confuse the public. Okay. You know, and unfortunately, they're succeeding. So that's why I think it, you know it's beneficial to work with a certified financial planner, particularly an independent one who mm -hmm. doesn't have uh, any bias towards guiding you toward a, a given solution uh, that might generate a commission for that individual. So, Brad, if I have a listener that wants to take that first step to get a plan put together, or maybe they have a plan, but they're not really sure, and they don't have a, a, a relationship with their advisor, or they've lost connection, or they've, they've lost confidence, or whatever that case may be, what does it cost to have a financial plan done? That's a great question. Start over way. or start? Yeah. Um, so, right, you can always have somebody evaluate a plan mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's, that's currently in place or to start over. So, the answer is I, I, I charge $200 an hour to do okay. a plan. However... It doesn't have to be a comprehensive financial plan. So as an individual comes to me and just wants uh, retirement planning as an example or education planning, that's going to take a lot less time and as a consequence cost a lot less. Uh -huh. um, but by the way, getting back to what Kelsey was saying, you know, uh, if you start saving for your child's college education when he's one or two years old, yes. that's going to be a lot less of a financial hindrance mm -hmm. than if you start that at 15 years of age. Of course. Right? So I think, you know, the sooner you get these sorts of roadmaps in place, the better for you and your family. Totally agree. Glenn, estate planning. There are a lot of myths out there when it comes to estate planning. Can you share some of those uh, with my listeners? Uh, there are all kinds of myths and misconceptions. Just kind of running through them quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, a common myth, estate planning is just for the rich. Another myth, I don't need a will. Uh, another myth, uh, I don't really need to, to get counseling on a will. I'll just go buy a form. That'll be adequate. Yep. Uh, my living trust will automatically avoid probate. That's a myth a lot of people have, uh, have succumbed <laughs> to. They, they don't realize they've got to get the assets they own inside their trust in order for it to avoid probate. Okay. Um, another myth about living trusts is that they avoid, uh, uh, that they're asset protection vehicles, that they protect you from creditors and lawsuits. Uh -huh. That's not the purpose of a living trust. And finally, a very common myth is, you know, I've kept things simple by naming my estate as my beneficiary, okay. there are all kinds of adverse legal, legal consequences that can flow from that. 
So again, it's just important to to sit down and talk with an expert, talk about an expert in your own personal financial situation when it comes to preparing for your financial planning, when it comes to how you're going to insure yourself and make sure your family's protected, and how you're going to make sure that you're protecting your estate and protecting your family member in case of death, which it's not in case of death, it's when the death happens. And so make sure that you're, uh, that you're protected there. And uh, Glenn, what about uh, who is the, who's the state planning for? Who benefits from the estate plan? Can you break that down? Well, hopefully the client benefits, the client's spouse benefits, Mm -hmm. uh, children or any dependents. Uh, Certainly the client's financial well-being benefits because a part of estate planning is to position assets that Mm -hmm. have been uh, well-insured or well-invested in a way that they will provide maximum benefit to the family, the client. Many people benefit. Makes total sense. I think that's a good place to uh, take us to commercial, but we're going to come right back here next on The Money Hour. Comprehensive financial planning, insurance coverage related to your financial plan, and weaving in your estate plan to tie it all together. Stay tuned so that you can learn how to financially prepare right here at 1150 AM KKNW after the short break. This is The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, March 28th show, bringing in expert advice and inside knowledge on today's events in our local economy and how it will affect your money. If you're listening to my show at a different time or day, you're listening to a broadcast, rebroadcast of my show, you can always call the show at one 855 411 50. Again, that's one 855 or online at themoneyhour.com to talk with my guest, set up time to plan with my guest, or ask him any questions that you may have. And in studio, my guests are Van, Brad Van Vectum with Private Wealth Management Solutions, Kelsey, Kelsey Blackham, Vice President of Duncan and Healy, and Glenn Price with Price and Farrington, Attorneys and Counselors at Law when it comes to your estate planning. So let's go ahead and start out. We were talking with you, Glenn, before I took us to break about estate planning and estate planning. People think it's about planning for death, but also it's planning for people and what they can do for you in during your life. If something happens to you and you can't take care of yourself, correct? That's exactly right. The death time planning document is the will, but there are four critically important lifetime estate planning documents everyone should have okay. of every age. What are those? First is a financial power of attorney to make sure that you've authorized someone you trust to step into your shoes, pay your bills, manage your investments, make financial decisions for you during any period of time during mm-hmm. your life you're out of commission. The health care power of attorney, the same idea, but now you're relying on someone close to you who you trust implicitly to make medical or health care decisions for you okay. if for some reason you're not able to make them for yourself. Thirdly is the living will, also known as the advanced directive to physicians, which is the legal document that addresses the issue of what are my wishes if I am on life support. And fourth is the all-important privacy authorization under the HIPAA privacy laws, which limits access to your private confidential health care information only to those family members or other individuals close to you who you wish to have access to it. And if you you talk about the the health uh, the health care power of attorney, I mean we can we can talk to somebody that's not a, 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 use an example of someone's not expecting to have something happen. But what if a child's in college, and and they become in a position to where they can't take care of themselves and they don't have a power of attorney set up for their parents to make decisions for them? I mean that could be a nightmare, Glenn. Right? It is a critically important problem. In fact, my twenty year old daughter mm-hmm. two years ago uh, had uh, her mother and dad put. Uh, powers of attorney in front of her and a HIPAA authorization in front of her to sign. Most parents don't understand that even though they're paying $50,000 a year tuition for their college student, if that student ends up in the infirmary and the parent calls in to get information from the doctors, nurses regarding what's going on, uh, the parents don't have a legal right Mm -hmm. to that adult child, that is 18 or older, private confidential health care information without the child having signed off pretty scary, scary position to be in. And especially these things happen when, you know, when the disaster happens and you're not prepared. Just imagine how 
big of a disaster that would be when you're not prepared because it's kind of hard to go backwards in that in that chaos and what's happening during that time exactly uh, Brad, let's talk about on the financial planning side when it comes time, because a lot of times I think people are going to come see you first in preparing for their finances and what they need to be doing to put that plan together. When are you bringing in your power partners like Kelsey on the insurance side and like Glenn on the estate planning side? So it's generally after I de- uh, deliver the financial plan. Okay. Um, I ask them during the interview process uh, if they're currently working with um, a trusted advisor like an estate planning attorney or or a CPA, okay. mortgage broker, yep. you know, any of those types of people. Uh, and if they uh, are currently involved with somebody that they like uh, and trust, fine, we'll mm-hmm. use them. Um, however, if they don't uh, or they're somewhat skeptical about um, qualifications of that individual, that's when I bring in uh, experts like yourself or okay. Kelsey or, or Glenn. Makes sense. And Brad, I know the benefit of hi- having a financial plan, but I'd like you to share with my listeners the disadvantage of not having a financial plan. Now, you know. You're left to your own whims and emotions, generally, uh, if you don't have a plan. So I think the best thing, frankly, about uh, having a financial plan, uh, a written comprehensive uh, financial plan in place, is that it gives you a roadmap, number one, uh, and then yearly you go back and revisit it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are we on track? Um, Have the investments performed the way we thought? Um, Was there a catastrophic catastrophic event during the year? Yes. Um, You know, any of those things are dramatically going to affect the plan. Was there a birth? Was there a death? Was there a marriage, divorce? Any of those types of things. Um, revisit the plan, modify it, you know, mm-hmm. and then uh, move forward and revisit it again. Yes. And so, Brad, they're sitting down and they're uh, talking with you and getting their finances uh, together. And coming over to Kelsey, I want to talk about long-term care insurance because um, I've dealt with my dad that did not have long-term care insurance, which I feel bad as the eldest child, not making sure that he was taken care of in that area. And so I learned a lot of lessons which won't happen the second time around when my mom, you know, when my mom goes through this. Um, But my mother-in-law now we're, we're dealing with my, my husband's um, uh, mother and she does have long-term care insurance and she's got disability. I mean, she is like totally taken care of. And there's so many things that are, that are just kind of creeping up right now. And there's no sense of stress. I don't, I think there's sense of stress for, um, for the people that are there because they're getting through those different times and changes that are happening in their life, which can add stress, but it takes a lot of, a lot of that away being prepared. Now, long-term care insurance, I think this is one is it, cause it can be spendy, uh, can't it Kelsey? It can, it can. Um, a lot of people, that is something that people assume when looking at long-term care is it's probably going to be too expensive for them. Yes. Um, but it's, it's generally affordable if you, if you look at it early enough yes. and you're young and healthy enough to that's qualify. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to hear you say. Waiting <laughs> Until you already need care is usually not a a good idea. Uh Um, If you already have a disability or something going on, it's going to be tough to get coverage. So so what you're looking for is to buy it at a time that you are still young and healthy enough to lock in a premium that you're expecting to pay kind of for the rest of your life. That's affordable. And it makes sense with the the benefits of long-term care. What is that covering? Of course, Brad. So what age would that be? Uh, 50, 55? Right. No, that's a great question. So most of the people that are buying long-term care insurance are in their 50s or early 60s. That just tends to be a very common yep. time as you Which approach retirement. Which is not retirement. the best time. It's not necessarily mm-hmm. the best time. You know, looking at it in your 40s or even early 50s would be really preferable, at least starting to take a look at it so you know what the cost is and know that that cost is going to go up each yeah. and every year you wait to kind of pull the trigger on that. So Kelsey, and I, I know there's a lot of different factors in that, but if somebody is starting um, their long-term uh, care at, at 40, what kind of cost could they be looking at? What's an average? Yeah, an average premium for just an individual can range anywhere from maybe $2,000 a year to okay. $5,000 a year. I think that's at least a, a good ballpark to start from. Yeah. There's a lot of different factors in designing a policy like that. So the mm-hmm. maximum payout levels and whether it's going to have inflation protection, what types of care it's going to cover, those are all factors to consider. And of course, there are some really interesting policies in the market right now, like shared care policies, where yep. a husband and wife can buy one policy together and kind of uh, share the risk and share the premium. <laughs> Since you don't really know who's going to need this care, when and for how long, there's some really nice ways to kind of bridge that gap without spending too much money. Yeah, but there are statistics that there's a good chance that one of them definitely is going to need this. Absolutely. Uh, this this care. Yep. Let's talk about, um, you know, a, a lot of people may say, well, there's, uh, there's Medicaid, there's health insurance, you know, why do I have to pay for this for myself. I'll deal with that when I get there and then the government's going to take care of it for me. Right, right. So yeah, that's a common one. I actually 
have a lot of people call in that tell me they want long-term health insurance. Uh -huh. That's actually not a thing. It's long-term <laughs> care insurance. <laughs> okay. Or it's your health insurance. Yes. They're very different it's things. Totally two different things. Got okay, it. so your health insurance is generally going to provide acute care, care that's designed to cure you or re recover you in some fashion. Okay. Long-term care is really what they call custodial care, meaning it's not intended to cure you. You're probably dealing with old age or senility or kind of a loss of your activities of daily living, yes. you know, eating and bathing and being able to take care of yourself. And those situations generally you don't recover from for the most part. Mm -hmm. And so that's where long-term care provides custodial services. That means home health care aids, um, assisted living facilities, kind of all the way down to full-blown facility care. So that whole range of things is covered under long-term care policies. So if you are wanting to take care of your parents, is this something that you can invest and do for them? Certainly, yeah. You can usually get long-term care policies up until about age 80, okay. <laughs> notwithstanding good health. Uh -huh. uh, so if you're in relatively good health and still under the age of 80, you're definitely still a good candidate for long-term care insurance and, and worth looking at for your parents, definitely. Makes sense. Uh, Glenn, let's step back over to you and get back into the estate planning arena comprehensive estate planning plan. What does that cost? Oh, I was afraid you were going to ask me <laughs> all that. This, so, all this you know, stuff takes money. You know, I think folks need to beware of someone who quotes a fee without knowing anything about them, okay. who they are, what their circumstances and goals are, what their family situation is. Mm -hmm. Because a flat fee quoted to everyone totally out of context means something's going to be pulled off a shelf and yeah. shoved in front of you the same as it is everyone else. I'm not trying to be coy here. Sure. The way we get around this is to invite folks into the office to sit down for a complimentary consultation with okay. us only after we get to know them, what's concerning them, what's motivated them to do estate pl planning. Mm -hmm. Are we in a position to really focus in laser-like on them and what they're trying to accomplish? And then quote a range of fees for different kinds of planning options available to them. Okay. And what about the the, the time um, to get this put together? So if someone comes into your office, they sit down and have a, a free consultation to get an idea of where they're at. They're going to get their plan set up. And how long does it take to draw these documents and make sure that they're good, completed, and uh, protected? Turnaround time is typically uh, two or three, maybe four weeks at the most. Okay. Uh, I think if folks are serious about doing this kind of work, and the professional advisor doesn't produce a product for months, there's a disservice being paid the, the client. So it's a, sh it's a relatively short turnaround. Okay, just like closing on a mortgage, three, four weeks, mm -hmm. you'll be in your new home. <laughs> uh, by the so, way, as yeah. an aside, uh, I, Christmas Eve, I was at someone's deathbed getting a trust signed. Wow. Uh, so, you know, so it just sad. depends on the circumstance. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it, not sad. At least they're getting it done before, right. you know. But um, again, it's just adding stress and, and uh, everything in, in finances seems to, easy to procrastinate on it, but it's a big mistake to make. Uh, Glenn, I, I want to ask you one last question here uh, on estate planning. What's the difference? What, what makes a good estate planner versus an estate planner that somebody does not want to work with? A good what, should be, what should be looking at an estate planner and, and, and hiring them? The same thing you should be looking at in a good insurance advisor mm -hmm. and uh, independent financial advisor. Someone who is knowledgeable, is willing to listen to you, knows what questions to ask, knows what issues to address with you that you don't necessarily know to go into on your own. That's the value of, of seeking counseling. Makes, makes total sense. Brad, on uh, the financial planning, to get a financial plan to put together, we've you know talked about the estate plan and, and the time commitment or, or the process to get that put together. What about getting a good financial plan put together? How long does that take? Uh, it's a great question. Generally, um, you know, if I can get information back from the client's statements and so forth, um, you know, a couple, two, three weeks, something like that. Uh, what I've learned, though, is if they give me a $500 uh, down payment um, on the plan, uh, I tend to get information back much more quickly. <laughs> oh, you're too <laughs> funny, Brad. <laughs> it, uh, than if you know if there's going to be a payment at the end of the deal. Uh -huh. That's right. So if they got a little skin in the game, I tend to get information back. So. <laughs> ah, I know how you work. <laughs> so, um, are, are, is there an obligation to have a certified 
um, financial planner manage the investments after they get this plan together, or can they make a decision on how they want to yeah, move forward? Absolutely not. Um, so what I do in my financial plan, uh, when I deliver the plan, I give them advice about how their assets should be allocated and so forth. If it's something they wish to um, have their current advisor or mm -hmm. investment advisor do, great. Uh, if they want to try and do it themselves at a, a local discount broker, that's great. They're under no obligation to do it. However, um, that is part of my business. Uh, mm -hmm. I charge a fee for assets under management to manage uh, the wealth. And generally what happens after I deliver a plan, the client mm -hmm. does come along and has me manage their investments as well. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Well, I just I want to thank each of you for coming in, Brad, um, uh, for sharing your expertise in the financial planning uh, arena. Uh, Kelsey coming in and talking about insurance and the importance of all the different insurances that that people need their health disability and long-term care and uh, Glenn for the estate planning it was just uh, really uh, really fun to have all of you um, talk on your uh, your passion and what you do in your industry and just helping my listeners so thank you so much thank pleasure. you quite yeah. welcome you guys gonna come back you bet. Maybe. Absolutely. <laughs> and if you want to talk to any of my guests, again, pick up the phone, call into the show. The show is wrapping up, but I will direct you, connect, directly connect you with any of them. 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50 or online at themoneyhour.com. And if you missed the, any part of the show today, uh, look for the uh, podcast and stream of the show and you can uh, listen again. And it was just, a, again, a privilege having all of you here. And a shout out to the listeners, call to action. You need to make sure that you have all these things set up. You have to have a financial plan in place. You've got to make sure you're, you're insured and protected in all the areas that you need. And you have to have a state plan. So it's really important. And that, again, is what the show is about, is making sure that I help you in your finances to make sure you're protecting yourself and, most importantly, protecting your family. This is your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, signing off for the day. But I will be back same time, same place next Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And I will see you or hear you or be here with you right here on 1150 AM KKNW.